Hey guys, welcome back to Economics and Comics. This is your spoiler review for the movie Stockholm. Um, if you like this channel, please sub. Also, if you want a non-spoiler review, please check out these guys, Joel and Mike Massey at GoneWithTheTwins.com. There will be a link provided. You can go over there and you can watch it through their written review. Um, anyway, how are you guys doing today? Good. Ed, yeah. Thanks so much for having us back. We're always excited to do these. So this is the stock classic. This is where Stockholm syndrome came from, or yes, is that what yes, essentially saying? that's that's kind of the big tagline. That's a big selling point for this film is that this is a dramatization of the 1973 event in Stockholm, Sweden, that led to the coining of the term Stockholm syndrome. So this is the actual bank robbery in which the uh, hostages ended up exhibiting signs of Stockholm syndrome to the point where they wanted to create a, a term to define it. Yeah, and, and it was the very first hostage situation, I believe. Yeah, very first televised. Uh, you know criminal situation in in the, the country yeah so the film is is based on the true events however they did change a lot of things yeah for, for the sake of entertainment value a lot of things have changed but we'll kind of go through yeah. a little bit of it here you know the, the setup one, one of the most odd things that they changed is actually the name of the two uh bank robbers. i think they changed the names of all the characters yeah, almost all the characters yeah except the uh the prime minister but don't they usually do that in movies though i, I don't know i mean because this is a historical film it it's, a, little it's a little strange you'd think you know that they would you know, for example uh, last year there, there was a movie called 22 july which was about um you know a, a mass shooting they didn't change any of the names because you can't do that otherwise well, then, it, it harms the uh, historical value of it so maybe they but, did it because they changed some of the actual facts too then well that's possible yeah because yeah. there were a few there, things that there's changed a bit right? of creative license taken because you know it's a hostage situation and there's only so many people that know exactly what happened inside the bank so yeah can, can i ask you something real fast because this you know this is a pretty simple movie and it won't be too hard to spoil but you know it says it's the first case of stockholm well they've classified it as right. that i find that hard to believe uh, oh yeah you know, yeah this, it, this it's, is the, it's just the first big publicized event that you know, took Sweden by, you know... The, a, the facts of this case were so strange yeah. that uh, psychologists decided they needed to come up with a term for how the hostages behave. But but let's let's dig into sure. the, uh, the yeah. plot. The, base, the yeah. basic premise is that Ethan Hawke is a, uh, you know, criminal who's been in and out of jail, and he, he's on leave from jail, right, at, at the point of this film in 1973, and uh, he decides to go rob a bank. And uh, he so he, get, he goes inside the bank with a, you know, a machine gun, he starts shooting, and then he calls... So the police arrive quite quickly, and uh, he has, in real life, I believe he had four hostages, and in the movie they cut it down to three. Just uh, for logistics, it makes yeah. it a little bit, yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, so the police arrive, and he makes a series of wild demands. Uh, in real life, he demands, uh, you know, a fast getaway car, and uh, uh, vests, uh, yeah, bulletproof yeah, vests. Bullet and three million dollars in uh, kroner, Swedish, Swedish kroner. Yeah. yeah. So in, in this film, they change it to one million U.S. dollars, which doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense because they're in Sweden and their plans are to go to like France afterwards. So what would you do with with American money like that? You know, it, it's just for the sake of uh, American audiences understanding that kind of money. Uh, they also in this film they specifically ask for the Mustang scene in the film Bullet, yeah. uh, which is a nod to American films, but at the same time that's not specifically what he wanted. <laughs> that was just to to make the film a little bit more relatable to an American audience. I'm sure. Yeah, well, I mean, Ethan Hawke, I, I believe, is an American actor, so, and yet... He, or he could know, be British, I don't, I don't remember. It's possible, but, but uh, yeah, but in, you know, in, in reality, they're both, you know, uh, Swedish. I think it's funny that, you know, you said there's, there were four hostages, I think, at first, but he let one go as a police officer, or one of the security yeah, guards. Yeah, no, right? that, that happened. Uh, he shot the police officer in the hand, and then the, that, he got... He yeah, there's a scene there. where he shoots a gun out of a guy's hand, which is, uh, that happened? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. With a submachine gun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in, in real luck so, of the draw, I guess. In, in the film, uh, one of the hostages is Numi Rapace, and uh, then he, then he has one more female hostage, and then a, a young guy hostage. Uh, whereas in real life, there were actually three women. So there were two two single women, and then one uh, married woman with the yeah. kids. And in the context of this, of this film, so what ends up happening is the hostages, uh, and what I believe is kind of a sensible, reasonable behavior. They kind of collaborate, not collaborate, but they cooperate with the bank robbers. They don't want to die. They don't want to die, yeah. And what's, what's really interesting to me, again, in, in the fictionalization of this film, is that the events shown here don't really feel like they needed to coin the term Stockholm Syndrome. Because, yeah. you know, they, they get the prime minister involved, and he immediately wants to deny uh, the bank robbers the ability to leave the bank yeah. with the hostages. So, of course... No negotiation. Yeah, so then the hostages are thinking at this point that they're expendable. Mm -hmm. And if I were a hostage, I also would say, well, to hell with the government then... 
let me let me see if I can help this scenario to where I can escape with my life. And and that's kind of what you see here. So there there is at a certain point there's a, there's a scene where Numi Rapace and Ethan Hawke end up kissing, and it's kind of ambiguous whether they actually have sex on the floor of the bank. It's it's prob that's probably not what happens, but they get kind of romantically involved. <laughs> And that's a little bit strange. That that's that's almost something that's uh, just oh, an embellishment. Before we kind of jump into that, and that's fun, and that's great. Um, I agree with Michael hundred percent. He asks, the, he wanted the car and the money, but the main point was to get his best friend or oh yeah out of jail. Uh, Mark Strong, who was another bank yeah, robber. Yeah. He's what was the guy's uh, Gun, Gunner Sorensen. He the, wanted. The, the I want Gunner Sorensen. You take him out of jail and you bring him here. Yeah. And then the 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 police chief or whatever had a side deal with him. You get these people out alive, and I'll let you go. Right. So, but it, you know, he didn't know who was robbing the bank. It was a friend of his, and he was trying to break him out. That's why he went to the bank in the first place. If this is based on true story, yeah, then that that well, has to be in there. In real yeah. life, his motivations were: a, Sweden is you know generally a very peaceful country, so he was expecting you know a very nonviolent response to his you know to the bank heist. But also, uh, it was. Uh, close to the uh, election time, so he figured the prime uh, minister would do whatever he wanted to to get the situation over over and done with, yeah. so that it wouldn't affect. They didn't the want a big yeah. political debacle. It, it yeah. seemed like they did the the, the, the bank rob, uh, Ethan Hawke did a lot of research. Like, well, if we shoot a hostage, uh, they're going to let us go, or like they seem mm -hmm. like they researched it and they, yeah. you're right, they planned it at the right time. Well, the the irony, and I think a lot of the the humor and the entertainment value in this film is how every scenario kind of gets botched. Yeah. So you get you get the police chief who makes these rash decisions that backfire. You get the prime minister making decisions that backfire. You get even the bank robbers, Ethan Hawke and Mark Strong, making bad decisions. And even at some points, you get Numi Rapace and some of the hostages making, uh, just, uh, changing the scenario in very comedic ways. One of the, to me, one of the funniest scenes is when uh, Numi Rapace's husband is brought in and, and they're kind of pleading, please don't hurt my wife. And, you know, will, will she be able to make it out alive? And they kind of have this little aside talk about what they're cooking for dinner. And I thought that was brilliant because it creates a bit of humanity for these characters, but also comic relief. Uh, and, and it kind of made well, these the characters the more three-dimensional. Do you think that happened? Oh, I doubt <laughs> I <Yeah>. doubt it. <laughs> that was probably just creative license, yeah. But, uh, I mean, the, the film is uh, over, over, overly a, a drama, I think, but there's a lot of humor simply because the, the, you know, the bank robbers almost seem inept at, at numerous points throughout and... They are making really silly decisions. Yeah, they, that they cause a lot of extra. It's problems. almost slapsticky in, yeah. in a way. Very, very much, uh, I, th I kind of felt a dog day afternoon. I think uh, drama's yeah. thrown out the window because, it, you know, with it's like you said, slapsticky. Uh, well, regardless, it, it, it's funny and there and everyone seems nice and everything, and it's almost just like a story being told. When they're in a situation where something bad could happen, I don't get nervous. Yes. Because yeah, yeah. you think it's you don't kind of feel like, a like people. Yeah, you don't feel like people are going to get genuinely injured. So yeah. I think if they're if they were going for that, then they hit it. But if they're going for drama, they missed it because of that. It's, it's, it's a mix. It's almost certain. Yeah, they're going for a mix. Uh, you know, and and one, going back to that slapstick, I, you know, toward the end of the film, they all. Um, are kind of bamboozled into get putting themselves in the vault, and then one of the officers, you know, slams the door on them, and they get stuck in there. And then they brilliantly negotiate their way out, yeah. uh, you know, because they were going to gas the the vault chamber to like put them all to sleep so that they could then, you know, pacify them. Well, they they manage to get out of the vault, the, the bank robbers with their hostages, and they get and then, into the car. They get into the getaway vehicle, and then at a certain point, they end up getting stuck back in the vault. It, it just very very yeah. hilarious, really, and and that actually is not entirely factual. They did they were inside the vault and that's actually in real life where they, they the story kind of ends. That was that's, the end. They ended up gassing them and then kind of taking over. So that, the part where they got out, that never happened? No, I don't think they ever got so into they the gassed getaway vehicle. Them. Yeah. Yeah. But again to to make things more interesting it, and it was more tear gas, so it's not supposed yeah. to kill them. Yeah, well it's that's just frustrating guys. Them. I mean that really does frustrate to me because that seemed like a pretty big part of the movie. <laughs> yeah. And if but it's all fake to, to tell you the truth though, the, to me the most infuriating thing is the behavior of the Prime Minister and the the chief of police. Because these are our characters, authority figures, you know, and it's easy enough to hate authority figures in films, but to see them make so many brash decisions that could could genuinely jeopardize the lives of the hostages is very infuriating, right? But Again, how do we know that's even real, Mike? If they're not going to do, if they're going to say it's based on a real story and based, I get it. Right. But then they're going to pretend all these extra scenes. How do we know that's what the prime minister and them? Did oh yeah, do? You, you don't. You don't. And, so, and I think in the context of the film, most viewers will be familiar with with the idea that Stockholm, this bank robbery, was what created the Stockholm syndrome. 
uh, concept, yeah. but I, I don't think a lot of people will know the, the, the minute details. So they can kind of do whatever they want, and people will just take it for granted that most of this stuff is factual. I, I feel like they probably embellished how much the hostages actually helped out. In, yeah, in it's, it's possibly. Did. But again, it was uh, significant enough that psychologists studied this case for years and ended up coining the term Stockholm. Well, Central. I mean, they probably studied it because at the very end, I mean, we're kind of finishing up here. Uh, you know, they all get arrested. The, the guy he saves, the guy he gets out of prison goes free. And then, because he saved the people, technically. At least that's what they're saying. And then the guy, Ethan Hawk, he's in jail. And at the end, he has a conjugal visit by the girl. Well, uh, not a conjugal visit. Yeah, just, just a, a friend. Oh, oh yeah? <laughs> I, I would say you're wrong. Because they're in a room. There's a couch with uh, blankets. It's so that, clo- uh, that space... That space may have been designated for that, but I don't. I mean, she said she was happily married <laughs> with their No, kids. she wasn't. <laughs> she oh, well. Uh, okay, well, yeah. I mean, I, again, they, there's ambiguity. Would she be there? There's ambiguity whether she actually sleeps with him in the bank vault, yeah. and you know, so it, it's, I, I, it's for, possible. Uh, one of the more interesting aspects <laughs> is that uh, the film kind of shows this whole hostage situation as taking place in perhaps about three days. Uh, in rea- real life, it took place over six days. Yeah. So that is a long time for them to be able to bond because they're all stuck inside the bank yeah. together. Well, in this film, they never successfully deliver food. To the- so, yeah, so you know, so over the course of three days, I guess you could you could figure they didn't get to eat. But over six days, almost certainly in in real life, they would have yeah. had to have food deliveries and things like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I enjoyed the film. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's, uh, it's light, it's it's breezy, it's uh, the, the great acting. The, the talent know, is there, yeah. Cast. Mark Strong is very good yeah. in his, his role. Numi Rapace is very watchable. And uh, Ethan Hawke is a uh, very uh, dynamic performance. And uh, yeah, it's very entertaining. Yeah, it, to me, it was a fun movie. And, and uh, But the end, you know, the end, they have them meeting in jail and they end it. And I guess that's okay for an ending. But I wanted a little bit more out of it. Um, it was kind of a... To me, as a movie watcher, again, I liked it, but it was just a kind of a slow-paced, yeah. um, light drama with some yeah. comedy. Yeah, I think part of that um, is because things didn't happen in such large quantities. Bu- you know, there, were, there weren't explosions and there weren't sh- big shootouts and things like that because, again, they're trying to adhere to a little yeah, bit no, of the nobody reality. Died. Yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a real serious big yeah. problem. One, one to life, me, so. one of the biggest problems they did was um, uh, at the beginning of the movie, they show Numi Rapace's character. Uh, and then they as kind a, of yeah, yeah like, like, like present day yeah. and then they cut back to the events in 1973 yeah. that's problematic because yeah. at certain points they make you think Numi Rapace's character might have died well they give that away you know so at the very beginning of the movie she's still alive well also there, there's probably a lot of people that are not familiar with this event at all yeah. so by showing you that Numi Rapace lives that's a it's well, kind of a big spoiler to just yeah. give away right in the first few seconds what I want to know if they got together after do you know that? Did they get together after he got out of jail? Uh, I had read. I, I had read that several of those hostages like kept up and became friends with like the families of the bank. Uh, yeah, from what I read, that uh, it was actually Mark Strong's character who became friends with some of the hostages, uh, because uh, Ethan Hawke's character was in jail for eight years. Yeah, but, but Ethan, he saved Ethan Hawke's character uh, ended up getting like a bunch of fan mail and yeah. like, letters yeah, from yeah, women yeah. and stuff. Apparently, he was a very good looking. Bank well, he's robber. like a crazy American, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, he was apparently he was a very good looking bank robber. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, they portray that. But anyway, I mean, uh, it was a decent movie for me. If you want to, again, if you want to read the review, if you haven't already left already, uh, <laughs> check them out at GoneWithTheTwins.com. They'll give you a rating. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, I guess. I would, I, I probably wouldn't go to the theater and see it, uh, but it was an okay movie for me, and it's something different. So I hope you guys enjoyed. You guys, thanks again. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. What do we got next? Hellboy? All right. Oh, boy. All right, see you guys.